Remember this thing, featherboard when this is unscrewed, roller guide when it's screwed in. Cool functionality, cool looking, very, very hard to build. After the popularity of this video, I had some plans to make build instructions or maybe even sell the product. They all fell through just because of the complexity. It's so intricate. Uh, it was just too much. I wanted to come up with a version of this that had the same functionality but was a lot easier to build. And this is what I came up with. Roller guide on one side. Featherboard on the other. Much easier to build, very similar functionality. And one nice thing about this design is that it allows you to take it apart so that you have a half height unit. This wasn't possible with the other one because of all the nonsense and hardware inside of the body. And use it on a table saw without all that extra height that's not doing you any good and is just getting in the way. Now since that last video, I've also started working with MagSwitch. And they thought this was a cool idea too. And in fact, they are selling a kit with the magnets and all the metal hardware you need to put this together. All in one place. Uh, for good price, I'll get to that at the end of the video. And if you're into that sort of thing, you also get 3D print files if you want to 3D print one, which I think is pretty cool. The hardware kit allows you to do either one. But for the rest of this video, I'm going to show you how to build the plywood version. So I start off by dimensioning the main body of the tool on the table saw and the miter saw. Now, I'm not going to call out all the dimensions in this video as I go, because if you buy the kit, then it comes with all the dimensions that you need. So the intention is that this video supplements those dimensions, gives you the sequence of how to do things, uh, and between the two of them, everything that you need to build one of these. And no way to teach sequence of a build uh, better than to screw it up. And I'm kind of getting things out of order a bit. I'm cutting the dado for the bearings. Um, but after I cut one of them, I thought, well, it'd probably be a better idea to drill the holes for the shaft first. So I went ahead and made the half circle on the dado end of the tool body uh, and then drilled down a little bit more than halfway and you'll see why in a second for the bearings and the two bolts uh, that hold the body together. Now I cut the body in half right down the middle and I had made it a little extra long to account for the curve of the saw blade uh, and then still get the dados out of order on half of the workpiece because really I should be continuing these holes uh, before doing those dados. So I'm not sure why I was in such a hurry, but do these holes first because as you see right here, it kind of chips out a little bit more than it would have uh, if, if I had drilled the hole and then done the dados. Somehow I managed to lose the footage when I was cutting the feathers for each of the top and the bottom halves. So I'm doing that here. It's a fairly simple process, just like resawing, except you stop. Uh, and, and I hog out the material in the middle so that the feathers have room to bend in. Now next, I need the heads of the bolts to be flush with the bottom of the tool, so they need to be recessed. And the way I like to do this is to first drill down about an eighth inch with a 7 16 inch drill bit and then heat up the head of the bolt until it's not glowing hot because that's too hot but hot enough to burn its way into the wood and give me that hex shape. Obviously you can chisel this out and make switch assumes no liability if you burn your house down but I like doing it this way. Now we can use the bolts and the thumb nuts to put the two pieces back together. Now, of course, there are other ways you could do this. Uh, I'm putting the angled sides on the featherboard side of the tool. You could have made two cuts on the table saw with the blade angled before even doing the resawing, which probably would have been smarter, but this worked too. Now I come in and do the separations between the sections of the featherboard. Now, the reason I have these here is that so if a workpiece doesn't contact the full height of the featherboards, you won't have some kind of warping and extra pressure on the top. It'll have even pressure across a workpiece, even if it's not as tall as the tool. Next, it's time to dimension the base that will hold the magnets. Now, if you want the super tight, snug fit that I get, you need to buy a 40 millimeter 
bit. Now, a 1 and 5 8 inch bit works just fine. There's a little bit of, of slop, but that's not the worst thing in the world. You'll never know about it once you have them installed. There's still plenty of room for the screws, so not a big deal either way. Now I'm using 5 16th inch dowels to join the two base sides to the body of the tool. So I drill those holes first and then use dowel aligning center thing pins, whatever they're called, to transfer those marks uh, onto the two base pieces. And then I drill holes in the two base pieces, uh, put the dowels in the center of the tool body so that they're sticking out each end, and glue it all together. Uh, and I make sure when I glue it up that everything's flat on the bottom. So I threw a couple extra clamps on there on a surface I know is flat to make sure that I have a flat bottom surface. Okay, metric alert. The hole for the shaft, if you use a 5 16 inch bit, you probably should sand it out a little bit. I was getting some splitting. If you have an 8 millimeter bit, that's perfect. It'll go in snug, but without any splitting. So I put the shaft in with the bearings in place and then use the magnets and a small drill bit just to locate where I need to drill a pilot hole for the screws to mount the magnet. And that's it. With those magnets in place, this thing's ready to sand and put some finish on if, if you want to do that. It's not a requirement. Looks a little nicer. Uh, but whatever. You know, this is your featherboard, not mine. It's cool. Whatever you want to do. Yeah, uh, I don't know why I'm still talking, but the video's going. I'm doing a voiceover. Still talking. Still talking. So there it is. Let's talk a bit about the kit. So the magnets that come with the kit are the big MagJig 150s so that you get a lot of featherboard force when you're resawing. And these sell normally for $40. So the two of these magnets together would be $80 and the whole kit sells for $80. So you get all the hardware, the six bearings, the thumb nuts and the shafts and all the fasteners, everything. Uh, with the magnets for the price that normally you'd pay for the two magnets. And if you use this code, this code right here, you get an extra 10% off of even that price. So that's a pretty good deal. Um, at the risk of sounding too much like an infomercial, I'll just say link in description, check it out. So that's it. Check out that kit. Hope you found this interesting. Thanks for watching. And uh, keep an eye on my channel for... Uh, some more collaborations between myself and MagSwitch. Bye for now. Okay, I lied. Not quite done yet. You might have noticed that I was pretty casual about how I squared up the drilling of these holes. And as a result, I'm a little bit of off 90. So I'm going to show you an easy way to fix that. It's not too bad, but there's a little gap at the bottom. And unless you're really careful with your drill press setup, it's probably going to be the case for you too. Uh, but it's an easy fix. And these magnets being a little bit proud of the surface, the bottom surface, is actually going to work in our favor because what we're going to do is shim one side of the magnet to tilt the tool relative to the magnetic base. And let's see, because we have a gap in the bottom and at the top, we need to tilt the body back, which means we need to shim this point here, the back of the magnets or the featherboard side of the magnets. So the distance from one screw to the other on this magnet is uh, about two and a quarter compared to six. So call it about four to one. So what I want to do is put a shim under the featherboard side of the magnet that is about a quarter of the gap that I saw on the very bottom. And to do that, I'm going to try three post-it notes. Just get a little hole started. Now, having these be a little loose, probably actually an advantage for this little operation, but I still think it'll work. Okay, let's see how we did.
Might as well lock her down. Much, much closer. I'm going to call this good. Probably if I went back and put one more piece of paper on this side, it would be perfect. But that's good enough for my shop. Goodbye for real this time.